to you, the show that sorts the facts from the fibs. On David Mitchell's team tonight, a comedian who admits to being a huge hypochondriac, or at least that's what he thinks he is. But what if it's something worse? <laughs> Please welcome Joe Lysett. <laughs> and a guest who called his first tour, Who is Nish Kumar? And his second tour, Nish Kumar is a comedian. Please welcome... <laughs> He spoilt the introduction, hasn't he? <laughs> it's Nish Kumar. <laughs> and on Lee Max scene tonight, a host of Watchdog, who is not only going to be entertaining us tonight, but after the show is going to help me get my PPI back. <laughs> Nikki Fox. Thank you. And I'm not saying he's posh, but he describes the royal family as new money. It's Miles Jump. <laughs> <laughs> and we begin with round one, Home Truths, where our panellists each read out a statement from the card in front of them. To make things harder, they've never seen the card before. They have no idea what they'll be faced with. It's up to the opposing team to sort the fact from the fiction. And Miles is first up this evening. <laughs> Whilst on holiday in South Africa, I had a two-minute conversation with what I thought was my wife only to discover that a small hippo had wandered into the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> David's team, what do you make of that? Miles, <laughs> describe your wife to us. <laughs> uh, tall, slender, statuesque. So did the hippo have a very similar voice to your wife? <laughs> uh, the, the hippo was just sort of moving gently around. Uh, and... <laughs> but not for that. <laughs> <laughs> not, not in especially close proximity. What was the conversation about and how did you go well, two minutes? Well, I'll tell you what the conversation was about. It was about me and I was doing most of the talking. <laughs> um, <laughs> which obviously contributed to my So where, where, in fact, was your wife? Uh, my, I, don't, I don't know where she was. She was just not... I was Have in... you ever seen your wife again? <laughs> So, where were you? I'm, I'm guessing that this is a safari scenario, am I right? Uh, it was sort of on the, on the outskirts of Cape Town. Describe the nature of the structure you were in. Right. <laughs> <laughs> is it a building? Is it on the fourth floor of a... Of a... Did okay. the hippo have to get it, in a lift? They're, they're... <laughs> No. OK, well, it's mainly bungalows. The resort is a collection of, of sort of bungalow buildings, largely A-frame wooden buildings with a kind of thatch roof. Why were the doors so big a hippo could get in? Well, it's a, it's a small hippo, isn't it? <laughs> How small is yeah. a small hippo? Like, like a George hippo. from Rainbow, or...? That <laughs> 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 big. So but... the, the hippo is only that big? Yeah. It's about the size of a, of a Labrador. Well, let's be clear, is yeah. that its width or its length? <laughs> uh, that, is its, that is its width, as viewed from behind and, I suspect, from the front. This is worse. Your wife's like the back end of a hippo. <laughs> <laughs> this A-frame bungalow has how many rooms in it? Uh, it's, got, it's got two rooms. At one end, there's a, a big bathroom, uh, and then there's, uh, the rest of it is a very big open-plan bedroom, and it has a sort of seating area in the middle of it, and it has a bed at the far end, a very... Robust bed and uh, <laughs> a bed you could make love to a hippo on. <laughs> <laughs> that is speculation, but I wouldn't bet against it. <laughs> okay, we're in the bungalow. Okay, I'm in the I'm in the uh, the ensuite end. Yes. Okay. And I'd been shaving and then, <laughs> you know, shouting over my shoulder. And I realised after a while, I'm not getting a lot back here. And um, I turned round and I saw that I had not been moaning about my career to my wife, but to a baby hippo. <laughs> How long was this baby yeah. hippo? Well, I only saw it from the back, but I imagine, statistically, it'd be, what, probably three times as long as it was wide? OK. <laughs> so, 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 broadly, so it was a sort of as long as this desk? Nobody measures or, or animals by long. width. Well, you didn't Oh, I saw a massive snake, it was this big. Yeah. 
So what are you going to say? Is he telling the truth? I think? think based on the width, yeah. it's a lie. I think that was a panicked reach for width. <laughs> <laughs> on the basis of the panicked reach for width. <laughs> I think we'll say it's a lie. You're going to say that's a lie. Yeah. OK, yeah. Miles, were you telling the truth or were you telling a lie? It is a lie. Oh. <laughs> 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 yes, it's a lie. Miles didn't mistake his wife for a hippo whilst on holiday. Joe, you're <laughs> next. I also went to the same resort and skinned a cheetah. <laughs> Tonight. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of my first driving lesson, my instructor told me I'd done pretty well, but that I didn't need to make the noises of the car engine as I drove along. <laughs> Please, Chief. OK, so what kind of noises would you make? Um, I find it very sort of reassuring to make noises in the car, cos I, I find it quite stressful driving. Um, so on the first lesson, this is when it started, and I'd just go. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, so you could replicate. Like, if you change gear, you'd do what you just did there. Uh, oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What's the uh, reversing around the corner backwards noise? <laughs> I need to just get into the into the character into to the position. I go. Um, uh. <laughs> 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 and would you That's make weird about that? <laughs> would you make all the noises? Would you do indicators, for example? No, no, let's not be silly. <laughs> <laughs> Just to get to the nitty gritty. Yes. Name of driving instructor, because I remember mine, Norman, and we ate Percy pigs. I don't actually. Do you know what? I don't because I had two. Because the first one was a friend of my dad's. And he kept shouting, don't panic. <laughs> it wasn't Clive Don, was it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the reference. Um, he, Who's Clive Don? Clive Dunn played... <laughs> Holy... Clive Dunn played... You've Corporal just fallen Jones into the generation oh, gallery. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this audience actually ooed the fact that Joe didn't know who Clive... They were like, oh, <laughs> you yeah. piece well, of Well, you say they ooed, perhaps they were accelerating. <laughs> So what do you think, then, Lee? What is your team thinking about this? Nikki, what do we think, then? I reckon it might be the truth. You think it's the yeah, truth? Yeah, I'd say that. Do you, Miles? I think just Joe is inherently believable, very trustworthy. OK, well, we'll say it's the truth. You're saying it's true. Joe, truth or lie? It is a lie. Oh! oh. Our next round is called This Is My, where we bring on a mystery guest who has a close connection to one of our panellists. Now, this week, each of David's team will claim it's them that has the genuine connection to the guest, and it's up to Lee's team to spot who's telling the truth. So please welcome this week's special guest, Amy. <laughs> What is Amy to you? This is my friend Amy, and I grossly offended her when I made a less-than-perfect sculpture of her head. <laughs> Nish, how do you know Amy? Uh, this is my friend Amy. We became friends after I found her asleep in a box of volleyballs. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, David, what is your relationship with Amy? This is Amy. She is the charity shop worker who sold my shoes whilst I was otherwise engaged trying on a pair of cowboy boots. <laughs> <laughs> Lee, where do you want to start? Nish, what, remind us again, Nish. Uh, she, I found her in a box oh, of yes. volleyballs. First of all, where were you where there was a box of volleyballs? <laughs> I was working at a leisure centre uh, just after I left school. Um, right. And Amy was also working there over the summer between school and uni. Right. And um, they sent me to check on the volleyballs. Well, and... well, check <laughs> on the volleyballs. <laughs> That's a good job <laughs> from you, right? Make sure the volleyballs aren't messing around. <laughs> <laughs> Has your manager recently been watching Toy Story? <laughs> <laughs> I believe the technical term was conduct inventory. So I was right. just you're trying supposed to, to count sure. them. Yeah, you're supposed to count them. Uh, and it turned out that what she was doing was because no one really wanted to play volleyball. She had found the perfect spot to have a mid-work sleep How big in. was this box? It was, like, woman could she, size. Could she stretch woman, woman size? size. Yeah, yeah. You've, heard of a, you've heard of a volleyball coffin. <laughs> 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 so they transport 
volleyball. Yeah. Yeah. So you opened it up and you saw a sleeping woman amongst all these volleyballs. How many were there? I'm like, I think probably like. 35. You see, you've just said to me that this box was woman-sized. <laughs> now, the largest woman I've ever seen is still smaller than 35 volleyballs. <laughs> <laughs> but they've they used this as a chat-up line. <laughs> <laughs> if a woman says, oh, I feel a bit fat in this, I'll always go, don't be silly, you're less than 35 <laughs> volleyballs for me. <laughs> <laughs> so she, she, did you wake her up? Yes. And so we became friends because then I would also often have a nap in, in the volleyballs? In the volleyballs. What was her job supposed... What was she supposed to be doing at the time? We, we, Perhaps we were... she was sent to count the volleyballs <laughs> earlier. <laughs> <laughs> become bored by the monotony of the process. The boss kept... I keep sending people to count the volleyballs and they never come back. <laughs> Working at the leisure centre, Nish, what else did your job demand of you? Basically, all round dog's body, so I would work on the front desk <laughs> sometimes. I think you said all round ball games. <laughs> <laughs> so everything except rugby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, bowls, David. What? They're not totally spherical in bowls. That's Are why they, they not? That's why they, yeah. that's why they care. <laughs> I would say, colloquially, they're still round, though. Oh, well, hello. It's all kicking off at Bridge Club. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Who else would you like to quiz? OK, Joe. what situation were you in where you were sculpting her head? Uh, we... I, I have an office in uh, Birmingham, where I live. That'll do. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Yeah, I totally believe <laughs> I mean, that, that makes it... You can answer any question you like, I don't mind. <laughs> you have an office in Birmingham? Yeah. But right. Why? Um, why? Just to, to write jokes and be creative in. So, you went to this office to write jokes... Yeah. ..and said to your friend, ..would you like to come along, sit in the corner and I'll sculpt your head? I've been looking for a use for all that clay I keep in my office. <laughs> Had you just been watching a Lionel Richie video? <laughs> <laughs> Hello? <laughs> oh. So, did you know how to do this? No. But, yeah, I, I thought practice makes perfect, so I called Amy and... Um, How long did you spend doing it? Maybe an hour or so. Weren't you tempted to just make it really soft, get her face, <laughs> push it into it... <laughs> ..then do the back of her head? <laughs> and then go, well, at least I've got a mould. <laughs> you said she was offended by this sculpture. Yes, yeah, she so was offended. What, what did you end up with? Um, <laughs> uh, it didn't look like her. What did it look like? Um, you look more like Ainsley Harriet. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Now, what about David? I'm looking forward to this. What was it you claimed, David? That, that, that Amy is the charity shop worker... That's right. Oh, yes. ..who sold my shoes yes. whilst I was otherwise engaged trying on a pair of cowboy boots. Can you talk us through the incident, please? Um, well, I was in the charity Which shop. Which charity shop? It was a, a Marie Curie charity shop. Near where I live. OK. So I'm setting the scene before this. You're, you're at home, you're thinking, it's about time I got myself some cowboy boots. <laughs> <laughs> I'm willing to commit to a new pair in case I go off the idea. <laughs> Just on the very slightest off chance yeah. that they don't turn out to suit me yeah. and my personality. <laughs> <laughs> cowboy boots, I'll be honest with you, don't particularly appeal to me aesthetically. Wow. I don't think me. they go with what I like to call my style. Oh. <laughs> well, how would you describe that style, David? I, I don't... I think my style is indescribable. Oh, no, I could describe it. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, let's, I think it's best left undescribed. OK. Uh, I wasn't sitting at home plotting the purchase of some cowboy boots. No. I was pottering around near my house, and I saw the Marie Curie shop, and I saw in the window what looked like a, a nice selection of second-hand novels. Right. <laughs> and I, I went in, and it wasn't a nice selection of second-hand novels. It was all Ken Follett crap. <laughs> uh, uh, but I did notice the, the, the array of shoes, and I tend to take my shoes off at home and maybe wear slippers or socks. I don't want this to get too sexy. <laughs> um, and so... I don't need my inhaler. <laughs> <laughs> So what I vaguely was on the lookout for was a pair of everyday, easy-to-put-on, non-lacing shoes that I could keep by the back door in case I needed to pop into the garden for some gardening. <laughs> but you said you'd taken some of your shoes to the charity shop. I was... W I was wearing shoes. <laughs> <laughs> and 
what you decided to take them off in the shop and hand Sorry, them to her. When, when, you, when you go shoe shopping, do you go barefoot? <laughs> You no, seriously? No, no. When I take Don't shoes, keep me waiting. When I, <laughs> when I take shoes to the Sue Rider shop, yeah. I choose shoes that I no longer want. I don't wander around and then go, well, do you know what? You can have these if you want. <laughs> Why would you do that? You take them ready to give. I wasn't. It was not my plan. Rob, can I just say, Rob? Rob, you're the only person in the whole of the United Kingdom watching this that isn't following this story. <laughs> Shoes. Why do you think you put the shoes on? <laughs> try the other one. Well, try the cowboy shoes on. on. Oh. <laughs> right. Sorry, sorry. Well, David. <laughs> David, I, I owe you an apology. <laughs> there you are in the shop. Yeah. Uh, I'm in the shop and I spot these cowboy boots, and to me, they look sort of quite loose and easy to slip on. What length? <laughs> Um, Not width, well, I, length. I'd say <laughs> that long. About that, so they're coming yeah. up to just below the knee. They're not, they're not, you know... They're, they're, <laughs> How tall aren't... are you, Rob? They're not below... <laughs> <laughs> For me, they'd be thigh length. Can't see over these. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to show I would say they're for a cowboy. They're sh shortish, but leather not, or suede. But they're not ankle boots. Leather so, or suede. Leather, and with a sort of bit of. Um, geez, I don't know the technical shoe terms, but sort of a, like a bit of uh, crenellation, sort of flapping on them. <laughs> um, I'm just going to have to use the terminology of the medieval castle. It's the only way I'm, <laughs> I'm describing it. Anyway, they look. So like... you saw them. You saw yeah, them. I saw them. Okay. So I thought, uh, you know, I'll try them on. Yeah. But they were slightly harder to get on than ah. I imagined. People in the shop, I imagine, were going, why is David Mitchell trying on <laughs> cowboy boots? <laughs> the shop wasn't as packed as you're imagining. <laughs> <laughs> I thought myself to be the only customer there. Right. I was soon disabused of that notion. <laughs> <laughs> when did you notice that your own shoes had been sold? I think, well, I, w I w remember I walked to the back of the shop mm. in the cowboy boots, restraining an urge to walk like John Wayne. <laughs> and when I came back towards the shoe area, I noticed that my shoes weren't there. And did you see who'd bought them? I didn't, no. I'm picturing a scene where you walk out the shop and you walk home, and then a few minutes later, a cowboy goes up to the counter and says, Excuse me, um, I... <laughs> I was just trying on a pair of, and then behind him a clown <laughs> and a sailor. <laughs> and this just goes on all day, yeah. round and round. Yeah. David, David, yeah. I, I don't know you. I've just got to know you today, and I admire you very much. But what I know of you from watching you on TV, the cowboy boots, it's just, I, I can't buy it. I can't imagine you'd even try them on. Well, in which case, th then you should say that I'm lying. <laughs> So, we need an answer. Uh, Lee's team is Amy, Joe's miffed model, <laughs> Nish's sleepy sidekick, or David's sneaky shoe seller? I'm more inclined to believe Nish myself. You believe Nish? Yeah. Because? Because, I don't know, I just think Amy and Nish look like they could be really good mates. Miles, you think? Well, I was looking at her very closely while Joe was talking about Scott looking at her, she looked quite icy about the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> and, of course, she was very offended in the story. Well, but during I mean, David's it... story, she looked, I mean, understandably baffled. <laughs> 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 I, I think it might be Joe, actually. What uh, do you think? Well, I'm, I'm not... I'm beginning to think. I mean, I, it doesn't even matter what I think. I mean, your own... <laughs> <laughs> your... I mean, my job really is to agree with you, Lee. I mean, you are a man... Are we trying to reenact Dad's army? <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that's wise, sir? Um, I think... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I think Nish is telling the truth. You think Nish is telling the yeah. truth? You think Nish is telling the yeah. truth? Right, in that case, I'll go with what my team say. <laughs> You're saying it's Nish? No, I'm overruling! <laughs> I'm going with Joe! <laughs> Are you seriously? I feel it's Joe. All right. Amy, <laughs> would you please reveal your true identity? I'm Amy and I'm Joe's friend. Oh! <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> 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 yeah. 
This is the sculpture <laughs> that Joe Lyle... <laughs> oh, good luck. <laughs> this is the sculpture. Get ready for this. <laughs> you will never <laughs> in your lifetime witness a worse sculpture than this. Miffed model. Thank you very much, Amy. <laughs> Which brings us to our final round, Quick Fire Lies, and we start with. <coughs> it's Nikki. Right. I love gravy so much that I freeze it into ice lollies to suck in the summertime. <laughs> <laughs> You maniac. <laughs> <laughs> what, what sort of gravy? Beef, chicken or vegetable? Beef gravy would be my gravy of choice. Do you only make lollies out of the beef gravy? If I'm desperate... Yeah, you do sound desperate. <laughs> <laughs> I might possibly choose another gravy. Do okay. you use granules? I try and avoid granules, cos I think if you're going to have a gravy ice lolly, you might as well do a posh one. Yeah. And everybody thinks it's strange. Yeah, it everyone is, thinks it's strange. strange. Do you think it's I just, strange? No, because I think if I made you one, you mm. suck that gravy lolly. We <laughs> need the inhaler again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You suck that gravy lolly and you'll be like, Nikki. There's the slogan right there. <laughs> It markets itself. <laughs> you suck that gravy lolly. <laughs> so, David, what are you going to say? Is this the truth or is Nikki telling a lie? Uh, what do you think? I think it's true. You think it's true? I think she's off a nut. <laughs> and I think she's made a gravy lolly. I think it's a lie because I think... No, I can't believe I'm having to justify this. It's a gravy lolly. I think it's a lie. I think overall... I think it's a lie. I think it's a lie. So, uh, OK. Yeah. Nikki, was it the truth or was it a lie? It is, in fact, a lie. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't yes, it's a lie. Nikki doesn't freeze gravy to use as ice lollies. Next, <coughs> it's Lee. On a recent train journey, under cover of darkness in a tunnel, I secretly switched bananas with the stranger opposite because his <laughs> looked better than mine. Hey. <laughs> So, uh, why was there no lighting in yeah. this train? Were you perhaps travelling in the 1870s? <laughs> <laughs> because it was daytime, and in daytime, they don't turn the lights on in a train. What? So they were unaware of the tunnels on their route. The tunnel was so brief and so quick, they didn't bother. So it was a very brief, so it was basically like an extended bridge. It was a, it was a shortcut. <laughs> So it was very quick tunnel, but very quick tunnel. You had I would time say, I would say, bananas. no, no more than five seconds. Can you demonstrate how you did it? Yeah, I had my banana, and I was looking at it, thinking, you know, when yours is just a bit, it's not. I like them really yellow. I don't like that bit where they're just gonna start to go a little bit black. Yeah, you know what I mean, just a little bit. But it was close enough where I thought, given an opportunity, I reckon I could swap that banana because he was reading his paper, <laughs> but he's not concentrating on that banana. He hasn't fully. Engage with the colour. So he was reading his paper. Yeah. With, so he's holding a newspaper with two hands, and then in one of the hands he also had a banana. No, no, it was on the table in front. Of, have you been on a train recently? <laughs> <laughs> the point is, he wasn't holding the banana. I'm not that bold. No, fine. I'm and not that so bold. That would have been awkward in the darkness. Hey, what's going on? What's going on? <laughs> hey, 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 what's going on? And then the lights come on. And I go. <laughs> Mine was sitting on the table, his was sitting on okay, the table. OK, and you saw the two bananas, yours has gone a bit manky, Man, his not is bit, pristine. Just, just, just on the turn. Just enough so, so I it, could get away with swapping it. Yeah, so it's plausible that he might think, oh, I thought this banana was yeah. fresher than this. But it was Never, like a film. It's it was been 14 seconds later, maybe it's just turned. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have any reading materials or were you just sat? Don't mock me, you know I can't read. <laughs> <laughs> I was simply entertaining myself as ever with my extra sketch. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, I remember thinking... <laughs> 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 I 
Yeah. I've looked at it. He's not looked at that banana once. That's wasted on him, yeah. but that's irritating yeah. me. Yeah. So, uh, and I just thought, like that, put it back in its case. I'm very protective of it. And I thought, could I? And I was tempted to do it. I thought, no, I'll never get away with this. And then suddenly, it was pitch black. I'm struggling to envision a tunnel that it takes five seconds to get through, but is... Well, do you know those really long tunnels? Yeah. Imagine one of them, but really short. <laughs> <laughs> That renders the yeah. whole carriage it just a complete Absolute. blackout. Yeah. Well, you know, all I could say, th this is one important factor you're missing. Bright what? sunshine, eye adjustment. <laughs> because the, the effect of the bright sunlight the bright, directly was, on your eyes. Did I not mention how bright it was? Very, very bright. Oh, it was, was bright. This... I can't help thinking he wasn't reading that paper, he was shielding him. <laughs> 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 In fact, the banana was so bright. I think the bananas actually grew yeah. on the train. Yeah. <laughs> it's a moment of complete blackness. Black! You, you, you're Black almost... The night. <laughs> You're almost blinded I in this so blinded. And, and, you know, it was so dark. You know when it's so dark, you think, God, it's dark, I could nick a banana. <laughs> but that's my whole point. But how I'm... did you manage yeah, how to put you your hand on his banana? So, <laughs> to be so... I mean, because you must I have rummaged a... around. No, I didn't rummage. Picture the scene. The etch sketches away. He's behind his paper. <laughs> and I'm looking, and his banana's definitely reachable, and he's not looking, and it's there. And I'm, even before we go through the tunnel, I'm tempted. I'm going... Could I? No. Could I? No. There's no one looking here. There's no one looking. And I'm so close to making that decision. Yeah. It goes black. Get it. Get it. Go. <laughs> get it. Get it. It's full. <laughs> and it goes. Actually goes. And I'll never forget his face. And I'll never forget his face. He literally. It made a bit of a noise, a bit of a kerfuffle, and the lights came, and he literally went. What do you think? Absolute nonsense. All right. Just think? listen. Give me yeah. another go. Um, <laughs> I, I, it was a pomegranate on a rickshaw. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a very, very rich, complete picture that Lee has painted. Yes. But I don't think he... I, I simply don't think Great he would fruit steal and someone else's... <laughs> <laughs> I think he looks low on potassium as well. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, for you, it is a lie, Lee. Were you? This is everybody's on tenterhooks to find oh. out. <laughs> Were you telling the truth? Or was it maybe a lie? Hmm? What do we think, Tim? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, this is the one where you know the answer oh, and you say. Oh, I see. Yeah. In that case, it's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Amazingly, it's a lie. Lee didn't secretly switch bananas with a stranger on the train. Well, that noise signals time is up. It's the end of the show. I can reveal that David's team have won by four points to one. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Good night. Celebrating 50 years of just a minute, Paul Merton interviews Nicholas Parsons. Just go to the Radio 4 website. Next, though, meeting the people of real America who've changed the shape of the country. Miriam Margulies on a big adventure.